Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my clinical biochemistry playlist. In previous videos, we talked about glycogen storage diseases. We talked about cystinuria, cystinosis, homocystinuria. We talked about insulinoma, glucagonoma, somatostatinoma, gastrinoma, as well as vipoma. We also discussed lactose intolerance and galactosemia. And we talked about Marfan syndrome in great detail in its own video, as well as Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Today, we will review them very quickly and compare between them. This is a very important topic for your exam. So let's dig in. Please watch the videos in this clinical biochemistry playlist in order for maximum understanding and retention. Starting with Marfan syndrome, autosomal dominant inheritance. Marfan syndrome is a problem in the FBN1 gene on chromosome 15, Marfan FBN1 15 fibrillin 1 protein defect. A defective gene, a defective protein. Normally, this protein sequesters TGF beta, but if I have Marfan, this protein has failed, which means I cannot keep TGF beta in check. I cannot put it in prison. Instead, it will go to the outside world and you will have elevated level of TGF beta on lab results. Also, normally, the function of fibrillin 1 is to surround and protect elastin. So in Marfan syndrome, I have an elastin defect. Marfan syndrome has lens subluxation, hanging by a thread, or dislocation, completely dislodged. Usually, the dislocation Marfan syndrome is upwards and outwards, upwards and outwards, superiorly and temporally. Marfan syndrome has aortic root dilatation, aortic regurgitation, aortic dissection, aortic aneurysm, and mitral valve prolapse. Marfan syndrome quick review, autosomal dominant with variable expressivity. Some patients have mild symptoms, others have severe symptoms, and everything in between. The gene is called FBN1. We have a mutation there. The chromosome is 15. The protein is called fibrillin 1. It is toast. And that's why TGF beta is all over the place, and that's why elastin is problematic. It's an elastin defect. Marfan is not a collagen defect. That's a very common mistake among students and doctors. Symptoms quickly. Pectus carinatum, bulging outwards, or pectus excavatum, my chest bulging inwards. Tall stature, tall limbs, scoliosis, lots of hernias, arachnodactyly, spider-like fingers and toes, skin hyperelasticity, joint deformity, hyperlaxity and hypermobility, lens subluxation and dislocation, aortic root dilatation, aortic regurgitation, aortic dissection, aortic aneurysm, cystic medial necrosis, mitral valve prolapse, spontaneous pneumothorax, because this is a tall, thin individual. So they rupture some of the blebs in the apex of their lungs and develop phew, spontaneous pneumothorax. Some of them have retinal detachment and myopia. If you have some robust knowledge of ophthalmology, you would recall that retinal detachment is a possible complication of myopia. So it's not uncommon for patients with severe myopia to have retinal detachment. Why? Because the abnormal size of the eyeball. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. We're done with Marfan syndrome review. Let's turn our attention to Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Ehlers-Danlos syndrome could be a problem in type 3 collagen, which is in vessels, or type 5 collagen, skin problems, joint problems, and others. Marfan syndrome was an elastin defect, but Ehlers-Danlos syndrome is a collagen defect. There are many types of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, like Gisellian types. I'll just focus on three. Hypermobility type, which is the number one most common type. Classical type, a problem in type 5 collagen. That's how you name the gene, collagen type 5. A1 refers to the alpha-1 chain of collagen. These patients usually have skin issues and joint issues. The skin is hyperextensible. It is thin, doughy, velvety, sometimes atrophic, transparent because of the atrophy, and revealing the underlying veins. Joint issues could be many, including hypermobility or joint dislocation. Another type of Ehlers-Danlos is the vascular type, problem in type 3, 
collagen. That's how you name the gene. Vessel problems. And when I have vessel problems, I'll have aneurysms, maybe in my aorta, maybe in my brain. I can have bruising because the vessel wall is weak. I can have dissections of the internal carotid artery, freaking emergency, or thoracic aorta, also an emergency. Aortic root dilatation can lead to aortic regurgitation, which can lead to a murmur. Thin skin, spontaneous organ rupture, such as a rupture of a gravid uterus or rupture of the bowel. Varicose veins could be seen as well. For more symptoms of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, please refer to my previous video titled Ehlers-Danlos. Skin problems, joint problems, weak vessels, ecchymoses or bruising, thin skin, organ rupture, uterine prolapse, poor wound healing, diverticular disease, especially at the sigmoid colon, varicose veins, scoliosis, pectus excavatum, high arch palate, and lots of hernias. Ehlers-Danlos is a collagen defect. Oh, where is collagen. Collagen type 1 is in bones, so some of them can develop secondary osteoporosis. But hey, Medicosis, you just said that Ehlers-Danlos is a problem in type 5 collagen or type 3 collagen. Why are you talking about type 1 collagen now? My papa drives the Rolls Royce. Because I've told you that there are gazillion types of Ehlers-Danlos. Some of them have a problem in collagen type 1. What's the most common cause of death in Ehlers-Danlos? Aortic dissection. Here is Marfan syndrome. Please pause and review. And Ehlers-Danlos. Pause and review. Now onto the comparison. Marfan versus Ehlers-Danlos. Elastin defect versus collagen defect. Both of them are connective tissue disorders. Marfan, autosomal dominant. Ehlers-Danlos could be autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive. Let's talk about the gene mutation. In Marfan syndrome, FBN1 gene on chromosome 15. In Ehlers-Danlos, could be collagen 5A1 or collagen 3A1. That was the gene. How about the protein defect? In Marfan, it's fibrillin 1, TGF beta is all over the place. In Ehlers-Danlos, it could be type 5 collagen or type 3 collagen or others. Both Marfan syndrome and Ehlers-Danlos syndrome have aortic root dilatation, aortic regurgitation, which can lead to a murmur, mitral valve prolapse, which can lead to the murmur of mitral regurgitation. Left third intercostal space, parasternal line, versus left fifth intercostal space, midclavicular line. The aortic root dilatation is usually more common in Marfan than Ehlers-Danlos, but of course it can be seen in either one. Both Marfan and Ehlers-Danlos can have aortic dissection, as you know. Next, musculoskeletal symptoms. Marfan has chest deformities, could be pectus carinatum or pectus excavatum. Ehlers-Danlos is usually pectus excavatum if you find it. Marfan is a very tall individual with very tall limbs. And in my fingers and toes arachnodactyly. But Ehlers-Danlos usually has the high arched palate. Both diseases can have joint hypermobility and scoliosis. Next, let's talk about dermatology, the integumentary system. Both of them can have hernias. Marfan syndrome can have skin hyperelasticity and sometimes stria. But Ehlers-Danlos has more skin symptoms because of collagen type 5, skin hyperextensibility, tons of ecchymoses, thin, doughy, velvety, atrophic skin, transparent, revealing the veins underneath. Miscellaneous point. Marfan is more likely to have arachnodactyly, lens subluxation or dislocation, and spontaneous pneumothorax. Ehlers-Danlos is more likely to have organ rupture, uterine prolapse, and secondary osteoporosis. Why not osteoporosis with Marfan? Because Marfan is an elastin defect. But Ehlers-Danlos is a collagen defect. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. If you want a cool mnemonic about Marfan syndrome, check out my video titled Marfan syndrome mnemonic. You will find it in my clinical biochemistry playlist and in my mnemonics playlist. 
Also, I have another video titled Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome Mnemonic. Please go ahead and watch it. If you have watched already, then you can use this slide to test your knowledge. Can you recall my mnemonic? Both Marfan syndrome and Ehlers-Danlos can lead to arterial dissection, including carotid artery dissection, which is an emergency. You can learn about carotid artery dissection, subclavian steel syndrome, chronic mesenteric ischemia, abdominal aortic aneurysm, Lourish syndrome, peripheral arterial disease, compartment syndrome with the Volkmann's contracture, cardiac tamponade, aortic dissection, and much more by downloading my surgery high yields course at metacosisperfectionetics.com. To learn about ARDS, many cardiac arrhythmias, angina, myocardial infarction, ischemic stroke, hemorrhagic stroke, and much more, download my emergency medicine high yields course at metacosisperfectionetics.com. Many patients with Marfan or Ehlers-Danlos benefit from beta blockers. To learn about beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, their remaining antiarrhythmics, antihyperlipidemics, anti-angina, anti-hypertensives, diuretics, and even freaking digoxin, download my cardiac pharmacology course at medicosisperfectionetics.com. If you do not want to download my premium courses but would rather watch them right here on YouTube, then click the join button and choose the highest tier to gain instant access to more than 300 premium videos right now. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel here or here, go to my website to download my courses, notes and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.